Now, this is actually a study that may be even more concentrated for women as well, but this is for everyone. And let's talk about the prayer of Hannah. The first thing that got Hannah to pray to the Lord, when she prayed to the Lord, one thing you got to understand is this, is that through prayer, she got the Lord to answer it. You notice that? Prayer is such a powerful form that you got to understand this, is that if during old times, a lot of people sought um, ma magicians or these uh, so-called witch doctors and prophets, to call upon their God. And through some kind of magical supernatural power, the witch doctor can bring down the rain, bring down anything. I mean, that's how powerful uh, these wicked leaders were, and their gods were false gods, so they didn't get their prayer answer. But that's how people expected. People saw these men as, man, these false prophets, these witch doctors, these pagan ritual guys, as, as soon as they talk to their God, their God's going to answer it miraculously. Like miracle, like an absolute miracle he'll answer. Well, here's the thing is that that's false God and they don't have the power. But don't our God have power? Amen, and shouldn't we believe that prayer is not just talking to him, but literally more than those magicians and false prophets, Amen. that what we ask of him, that he can remove a mountain if he wanted to. Amen. But you don't believe in that power. And without such faith in that power, the lords uh, that's why the Lord's not answering your prayers. You have to believe, I, I mean, how, many, how often do we have belief when we pray to the Lord? That's good, brother. How often do we have such belief to the Lord? This kind of prayer just makes God rain down stuff from heaven. It is a powerful prayer. I mean, giving life, giving a new life to a woman, that's one of the most powerful things that you can ever ask. All the scientists, researchers, heavy equipment, and the experiments that they do, they still cannot pr produce life from non-life and insist on evolution. Amen. They still cannot do that. But God can produce life from non-life. Why? Because it was through words. Non-life words. But God saw those as living words. And through His living power, He answered and produced life. Samuel. What started it out? Look at 2 Samuel, 1 Samuel, excuse me. Did I say 2? 1 Samuel chapter 1. And then read verse... Four. And when the time was that Elkanah offered, he gave to Penina his wife and to all her sons and her daughters portions. But unto Hannah he gave a worthy portion, for he loved Hannah. But the Lord had shut up her womb. Look at this. This is what started her prayer. And her adversary also provoked her sore for to make her fret because the Lord had shut up her womb. And as he did so year by year, whether, when she went up to the house of the Lord, so she provoked her. Therefore she wept and did not eat. And then afterwards, notice over here at verse 9, So Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh, and after they had drunk. Now Eli the priest sat upon a seat by a post of the temple of the Lord, and she was in bitterness of soul, and what? Prayed unto the Lord. You know what started that? Yeah, right there. Right? Bitterness of soul, right? Now go backwards. What started it? Verse 6. Nothing would make a woman more strong and more insistent if she's jealous. What did Paul say at the book of Corinthians? I have godly jealousy. You know what would create a strong prayer? If you have strong jealousy. If you have a godly jealousy. If something provoked you. You don't think that you're not going to pray harder when you get so jealous and upset that there are so many uh, wrong doctrines spreading and false pastors deceiving souls, sending souls to hell, and you don't think that's not going to make this pastor pray more passionately? Why else would the Lord answer my prayers, right? Why do you think my enemies fear me now? Some of those uh, enemies fear me. They don't have the guts now to mention my name, and they'll pick on some other Bible believer. You know why? Because those same guys who attack me online, 
when uh, I prayed to the Lord, what? I had this, I, it provoked me. It provoked me. And because it provoked me, it produced such strong prayer, and the Lord answered it like to a T, right? Did you know, remember that? Remember that? Same, uh, they made a documentary. Can you believe it? They made a documentary attacking me. Isn't that amazing? When I prayed to the Lord, what happened the very same day they released their documentary? You know what happened, right? One of their pastors got caught marijuana gambling prostitution. That ain't a coincidence. It ain't more of a coincidence when one of those pastors got mad at me, calling them out saying, see, the Lord's judging you. Make sure you repent. And the other pastor got so mad and said, guess what, Gene? It did not happen to me. You know what God did? Same day he said that sermon, another pastor struck in the hospital. One of their other pastors struck in the hospital same day he said that sermon. But how, why did such power come out through prayer? Something should move you. And if you have this as a precursor, what do you think is going to happen? If you have this as a precursor, these are the kind of steps that are going to be laid out as a foundation later on. Look at the next parts. What is it? What is the next parts? Read at verse... So, at verse 7, she provoked her, right? Therefore, she what? Wept. You see that? If you look at verse uh, 10, bitterness of soul, prayed unto the Lord, and wept sore. See that? There is one thing that I've learned so important in prayer. Prayer has to be fervent. When is the last time that you shed tears in prayer? When is the last time you prayed so fervently like Jesus Christ that you sweated as if it were great drops of blood? To produce powerful prayer, see, it requires all your being. Do you really put all your heart into it? Or is it just words on a piece of paper that you're reading out so that you can check mark and resume the rest of your day? Nothing is more dangerous than mechanical prayer. Nothing is more dangerous than a dead prayer. Because it's all just vain repetitions, as Jesus said. So tears. Here's what's even more dangerous. What's dangerous is that you involve, you try to involve emotionalism as you pray to the Lord. But I thought you said tears are involved. Yeah, there's tears. But I'll tell you what, if you're trying to force out the tears, see that? If you're trying to force out the emotions, that's not Holy Spirit led. It's got to be something that naturally comes out. Why won't it naturally come out? Because your being is not into it, see? Your heart's not into it. If you were to think about that loved one of yours who's about to drop and burn in hell for all eternity, you would bet your very life and soul upon that one chance of prayer that you've got. And that would produce the natural tears that would flow. So, do we see the tears? Do we see the emotions, the heart, basically? See that? Do we see your heart poured out? Or is it forced upon? That's why it's ridiculous. A lot of these churches, overtly emotional, that they uh, deliberately make 20 verses out of Just As I Am so that to repeat the altar calls. Southern, Baptist, Southern churches are very infamous for that in camp meetings. They keep repeating the hymn over and over so that the person can keep retreading on the altar and they'll try to force the tear out, try to force them to cry out to God. No, that's, that's not revival then. That's not revival. Another thing as one of our brothers pointed out over here, is that if we read verse 10, bitterness of what? Let me ask you this. What are your most powerful answers to your prayer before? You ever recall the most powerful answers to your prayer before? Wouldn't you be honest to include it was some of those moments where you were in bitterness of soul? The great miracle and answer that you see God intervene was when you're in the most dire moment, the most troubled moment. Some of us wonder why do we go through so much suffering and trials from the Lord, right? You know why? Because your prayer life is weak. So then the Lord, he has to send you the trial or the trouble, just like Hannah. Who shut up her womb? The Lord. The Lord had to send a trial, a troubling experience, travail, Travail and pain, and it was through travail and pain that the prayer became more sincere, 
more powerful. And that's why you see God giving greater answer to prayer. The more desperate, the more pain you are, the more sincere you are in your prayer, and the more power there is in your prayer. Good, Jesus Christ, was he not in bitterness yeah. of soul when he prayed? He prayed very heavily because he was in so much pain. So, many of you in your lives, you went through so much pain, through, through that travail and bitterness, greater prayer was answered as a result. How about that? Now, notice over here that because of this, look at verse 13. Look at verse 12 and verse 13. Verse 12 and verse 13. And it came to pass as she continued praying before the Lord that Eli marked her mouth. Now Hannah, she spake in her heart, only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. You know what prayer is? Prayer is not voice only. That's what a lot of people make the mistake on. You think that sincere, powerful prayer is what you say to the Lord? It's not what you say to the Lord. Prayer, yes, it can be done through words, but it can be done through the heart. It could be done wherever you're walking. It could be done in your thoughts. It could be done through emotions where you're not able to say and transmit the words correctly. And Romans chapter 8 says the Holy Spirit, it makes groanings that cannot be uttered, intercedes our behalf, and makes the prayer more real to the Lord. Prayer is literally your very living and being. It's not just words. So if you think that your prayer time is when you wake up in the morning or before you eat your meal or before... Uh, uh, you ask God for the blessing upon Bible study, then you are not living your prayer life. Prayer life is not just saying the words, it's living in it. It's practically living in it. Uh, Dr. Ottman mentioned this one famous story about this guy who is known for uh, mighty prayers. And one of these people was very curious and wanted to know the secret to his powerful prayer life. So the guy sneaked into this older man's house, the one who was known as powerful prayer warrior, so this young man sneaked inside his house, snuck underneath his bed, and then he heard the guy mumbling to himself, and he was like, man, is this guy crazy or what? And this guy was just walking, doing his normal chores, but he's just mumbling to himself in the house. And then uh, all of a sudden he heard very clearly as the man lay down in bed. He, it wasn't like a 15-minute praying on your knees and saying, Lord Jesus Christ, I pray that you'll bless me with a good night's sleep. No, no, it was just where he just went to bed and said, good night, Jesus, and went to sleep. You know what he realized? He realized the man was not just doing a, a specific prayer time that has to be on the knees and bowing head, closing, closing eyes, looking through a list. No, it's actually his very living, wherever he walked in the house, whatever he did, he was talking to the Lord. Amen. So it's not voice only. It's literally your life. Is your life honestly in prayer? Can you say that your thought life is prayer? Or is it vain imaginations? The feelings you have, is it anger? And that's why you wonder, why am I so hot-headed? Why do I always be rash? Because you're not living in prayer. You're living in emotion of anger, not the emotion of prayer. Before you be impulsive, how do I get wisdom? How do I get wisdom? You get wisdom through living in prayer. Your emotion. Is your emotion in prayer? Is your thinking in prayer? Is the very being in prayer? Notice at verse 13 and 14, she was criticized. When you get deep into prayer, the enemy attacks. You will face criticism. You know why? Because the threat, the, the greatest threat to the spiritual world of hell, of Satan, the greatest threat is prayer. You think it's through soul winning? You think it's through planning a church? All those things are necessary, and you need the whole armor of God. There's no doubt about that. But the weapon that is above all those things where you really don't need armor at all, Ephesians 6 shows you don't need armor for this. 
It's just going on your knees and praying. How about that? Now, if that's the only weapon that really pierces through and attacks this enemy over here, you think he's going to st stay quiet? No, he's going to interfere. So he'll attack you. That's where criticism comes in. See that? Did, didn't you read the book of Daniel? When Daniel was praying, and he prayed sincerely and powerfully, and what did one of the angels said? I was fighting with Satan, the prince of Persia. That's why it took a while. Yeah. Do you have that kind of prayer life? You've never seen that, have you? That maybe your prayer life is not real. It's not really a threat to the enemy, your prayer life. Your prayer life should be a great threat to the enemy. And you should be facing criticism and persecution. If you haven't been, then Satan thinks that you're not that big of a target. Now, you know what happens over here? That's why at chapter 2, the Lord decided to put Hannah's prayer as part of Scripture. Mm -hmm. That's all of Hannah's prayer over there at chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. And by the way, she's the one that's better than the pastor. Now, you women may feel like, oh, you know, uh, why, can, uh, why can't women be pastors? There's a small role for me. I can't do much for the Lord. Are you kidding me over here? We have right here a humble woman whose prayer life the Lord decided, I want to record it. And not only that, was greater than Eli. Wow. I don't see Eli's prayer. Do you see Eli's prayer? A pastor's prayer? If there's a prayer that you want to hear is your pastor, not some random member, especially if it's a woman. We don't want to hear a woman, right? Uh, look what the Lord uses. Huh? Look what the Lord uses. That's why, why do you, what do you think Samuel said? You know what she raised up? She raised up a good man. Look at sec, 1 Samuel chapter 12. 1 Samuel chapter 12. First Samuel chapter 12. Now, Samuel, he was known as uh, a man of prayer as well. You know why? So here's the thing, women. If you're a prayer warrior, one day the Lord will bless you with a child as well to be a prayer warrior. Amen. You can give birth to one. Amen. Why? Because like, uh, like father, like son, mother, daughter, etc. But did they see that kind of example in your life when they were growing up, when they saw it? Some people, now they're trying to catch up their prayer life and it's too late. Isn't it best to start now? You know what Samuel said? One of the scariest verses in your Bible, and a lot of people use this verse when they talk about prayer. Nearly everybody does. So you want to know this verse. Samuel said this. 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 23. Moreover, as for me, God forbid that I should what? Sin, Sin against the Lord in what? Ceasing to pray for you. He learned from a very good mother. Yeah. Oh, but you know, the pastor's not living right. His children's not living right. So why should I be praying? Why should I serve God? And a lot of them become bitter and mad and they use that as an excuse to leave church and to wreck their lives. Hannah didn't do that. Just because Eli messed up, the pastor messed up, and his boys were horrible testimony, Hannah did not follow that example, and she made sure that her boy did not follow that example. Amen. And, you know, and that's why the Lord used them. Yeah. Otherwise, you wouldn't have those two books in your Bible named after Samuel. Amen. Never use a pastor or a church as your excuse. That's a sorry one. Never use that. Amen. Never use that as your excuse. And don't let that throw you away from the Lord. Now, this one is a great lesson for you women, but this can be applied to every individual. I think this was the best lesson out of everything tonight. Amen, brother. Heavenly Father, I pray that tonight's teaching were a blessing to the hearers. Help us to get home safely and change, change our lives and apply it 
deeply, intimately, where we can transform on how we communicate with you the privilege of man speaking to God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.